by 1992, there were already a few prominent sitcoms featuring African-American families, like The Cosby Show and Family Matters. Another show, however, that was about to debut that year would be unique in that its main two stars played a Black couple that a new generation of fans could relate to. Young adults who didn't want something as wholesome as the other popular options thoroughly enjoyed it, as did teens who thought the edgier comedy was way cooler than anything else that was available to watch. That show was called Martin. It all came about after stand-up comedian Martin Lawrence gained massive attention being featured on the HBO television series Deaf Comedy Jam. Martin and his manager started shopping around an idea they had for a comedy show of their own, a sitcom that would draw on Martin's gift for creating characters. HBO agreed to make a pilot, and then Fox gave it the green light. Martin aired for five seasons on Fox from 1992 to 1997. Not only did Martin star in the show, he's also tapped as its creator, along with John Bowman and Topper Carew. All three also served as executive producers. He played the role of Martin Payne, a disc jockey in Detroit, Michigan. While he could be quite caring on the inside, on the outside, he often acted macho and selfish. He worked for the fictional radio station WZUP, and later for local public access television station Channel 51, as host of the talk show Word on the Street. Let me tell you a little something about my girl, Gina. Gina worships the ground I walk on. If I tell Gina to jump, she just said, ha ha. <laughs> I tell her to watch her head because you're going to the moon. Gina Waters Payne, played by Tisha Campbell, was Martin's girlfriend and later wife. She was fun-loving, romantic, and often acted as a peacemaker among her friends. She worked for a public relations firm and held a master's degree in the discipline. You are now looking at the new assistant director. What? <laughs> Girl, you get enough paid, you know that, huh? <laughs> Pamela Pam James, played by Tashina Arnold, was Gina's best friend and coworker. She had a lot of sass, a golden voice, and a banging body. Cole, one of Martin's best friends, was really feeling her in early episodes, but she would never give him the time of day. Who she was feeling was Martin's other best friend, Tommy. She also had a particularly antagonistic relationship with Martin. There aren't any good men around and you and your friends keep proving me right. You know what? Prove my razor works and go shave your back. Do that. <laughs> Fun fact, Martin and Tisha actually go way back. They even shared the big screen in 1990's House Party and 1992's Boomerang. He hit Tisha up about doing his own sitcom when they both attended the Boomerang premiere. He told her he was in the process of putting the project together and wanted her to play his girlfriend. It took some doing to get her to come on board though, since by the time he'd finalized everything, she'd already filmed the pilot of another show that had gotten picked up. Martin didn't care. He was determined to make Tisha his Gina. So he went over to her apartment to give her his best sales pitch, not knowing he'd encounter Tashina there as well since they were roommates. You see, Tashina and Tisha go way back too, all the way to childhood. They started auditioning around New York City together when they were 11 and 12 respectively. They also booked a gig together when they both appeared in the 1986 movie, Little Shop of Horrors, as part of the singing trio. As it turns out, Tashina had already auditioned for a role on the show and made Tisha promise her that she wouldn't let on to Martin that they knew each other because she wanted to get the job on her own. Tisha did keep quiet and Tashina did get the job on her own. Thomas Tommy Strawn, played by Thomas Michael Ford, was one of Martin's best friends since childhood. Level-headed, intelligent, and charming, he would often serve as the voice of reason and also portrayed himself to be a ladies' man. He had a romantic relationship with Pam during the third and fourth seasons. His mysterious employment status was a running gag on the show, with everyone coming to the conclusion that it was because he didn't have a job. You just happen to have a blowtorch with you. <laughs> I need this for work, man. I ain't got no job. Man. Cole Brown, played by Carl Anthony Payne II, was Martin's other best friend. Dim-witted but well-meaning, he cleaned jets at the airport for a living, drove an old car, and lived with his mother. Yeah, I got dreams too. Big dreams. You know, moms ain't gonna live forever, right? <laughs> One day I'm gonna get that room with the window. Fun fact, both Tommy and Carl also had old ties to their future co-stars. Martin called Tommy directly to tell him about the show and asked him to be a part of it, while Carl already knew Tisha and Tashina from the audition circuit in New York. While Cole and Martin were best friends on the show, Carl and Martin had a rather rocky real life relationship. 
Rumors of the tension between the two were eventually confirmed by Carl in 2015 during an interview with This Is 50. You and Martin did not get along. He was always undermining you and whatnot, and you know, he, he picked on you real hard. Is that true? <clears throat> yeah, that's true. That's true. What was what was y'all issue? I don't know. I, I can tell you what. I never had an issue. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I never. I never. I mean, I, I I developed an issue. Like if you got an issue with me, I'm gonna be like, you know, what's 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 up? You good? I ain't got no no problem with you. So. In addition to the Fantastic Five, two other characters got quite a bit of screen time in the first couple seasons of Martin. Sean McDermott, played by John Grise, was the scatterbrain radio station engineer where Martin worked. And Stan Winters, played by Garrett Morris, was Martin and Sean's boss, the owner of WZUP. He typically used too much cologne and wore outdated clothing from the 70s. New policy, man. Collect, call, interviews only. From now on, you got that? Reportedly, he was meant to play a bigger role in later seasons, but these plans had to be scrapped when he became the victim of a 1994 holdup attempt taking several shots to the chest and stomach. The show then went through massive rewrites and Stan was written out. He still filmed a few scenes from his actual hospital bed to tie up the storyline. That explanation makes it seem like Garrett left on his own accord, but that wasn't the case. Many years after he left, he revealed that he'd been fired by Martin himself while still laid up in the hospital. That's when the uh, person who was producing uh, Martin uh, decided to fire me while I was actually in the hospital itself. Uh, and um, I received a script while I, I had, this was about my fourth major operation, and I received a script that said, um, Stan sells the radio station and moves to China. So I said to the makeup lady, I said, does that mean I'm out of the show? She says, yeah, it looked like to me. Anyway, that's one reason why I didn't want to even go to it. But uh, that's what happened uh, basically while I was actually in the hospital. Uh, for some strange reason, they decided to get rid of me. To this day, he still doesn't understand why he was let go. He also admitted that Martin lied to the media when he said that he visited Garrett after his shooting and cried by his bedside. Martin premiered on August 27, 1992. In early episodes, he began with a monologue of him speaking directly to the camera and audience from his darkened radio studio. Like all sitcoms, Martin was based on a script written ahead of time to guide the show, but at any given point throughout filming, he would completely throw those instructions out the window. His improvised antics were so hilarious on set that it was often difficult for the other cast members not to break character and bust out laughing. Not everyone was laughing though. While Martin earned a following of diehard fans, the show also had its share of critics. Its street smart hip hop air drew criticism from some, most notably comedian Bill Cosby, who lambasted it as a bad role model for young blacks. You can look at us and go, wow, they're not the Huxable. But we're not trying to be the Huxables. And we shouldn't try to be the Huxables. You know, they can do that, we can do this. Fans couldn't care less about what the critics had to say and continued to show their support by tuning in every week. The following are some of the most classic episodes that remain unforgettable. In Really, Gina Is Not My Lover, Season 2, Episode 2, Martin stresses to Gina how important it is to him for her to look her best at his upcoming high school reunion so he can impress his old nemesis, Ricky Fontaine. Pretty Ricky, what they called him. She goes all out getting ready, but ends up with a botched dental procedure, leaving her numb and swollen, and an allergic reaction in the form of a terrible rash all over her face after a facial. While Martin tells Gina to stay home and goes without her, she shows up later and Martin has to figure out how to deal with the situation. I couldn't let you down. Okay. I took the pills and I had a little nap. Uh -huh. And now I'm fine. In Hollywood Swinging, season two, episodes 11 and 12, Martin quits his job after interviewing popular talk show host Varnell Hill. Martin plus the gang head out to the Golden State in the hopes of Martin landing a show of his own. During a taping of the Varnell Hill show, that Martin, Gina, and Cole attend, Martin crashes R&B group Jodeci's performance. Yeah, 
Season 2, Episode 16, titled No Justice, No Peace, sees Martin go to court to fight a parking ticket and act as his own lawyer. While his cross-examination of his friends is hilarious, Your Honor, you're gonna have to make him speak up. What does GTD stand for? Got the draws, okay? Got the draws! <laughs> It doesn't compare to his over-the-top craziness at the end of the episode when he tries to prove his insanity defense. I think the case should be thrown out due to the fact that I'm insane. <laughs> Build a pocket knife. Build a pocket knife. Build a pocket knife. My mommy say that. I doubt that. We're be coming around the mountain when we go. Suspicious Minds Season 2, Episode 17, revolves around the mystery of Martin's missing CD player, which causes him to channel Nino Brown, the lead character from the 1991 action crime film, New Jack City, to interrogate his friends. Gina, Cole, Pam, Tommy. I know somebody knows something. Yeah, ain't that right? Yeah. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> Leg. Romantic Weekend Season 3, Episode 24 is more popularly known as Chilligan's Island, since that was the name of the vacation destination Martin took Gina. Considering he found the place from an ad on the back of a cereal box, it shouldn't have been a surprise to him that they would encounter some crazy stuff. And did they ever. What's wrong? Hey, baby. Yeah. I think there's a puppy in our room. <laughs> DMV Blues Season 4, Episode 25 features Martin spending the entire day at the Department of Motor Vehicles after his insurance is canceled. It's really the people he encounters there that make this episode, like Miss Jerry and the You So Almondy guy. Uh, What, what, what'd you say, man? What, what? Now you know you heard me, Almond. I don't even know why you tripping. What's your little Almond he sell? You sell Almond -y. Look at you. I'm gonna start calling you Almond Joy. While there were several trademark running gags of Martin, probably the best one was him playing multiple characters. Here's a little rundown of all nine of them. Shanae Jenkins was an exaggerated version of a stereotypical ghetto girl. She always had on flashy clothes and accessories, dramatic nails, intricate hair weaves, and spoke in African-American vernacular English. She lived in the apartment across the hallway from Martin, never failed to get into it with Gina and Pam whenever their paths crossed, and was also a businesswoman, owning and operating a hair salon. Fun fact, the Nene dance, created in 2013, was loosely based on the dance style of Shanae. Edna Payne was Martin's mother. She was extremely overprotective of her baby boy and disliked Gina a lot. Otis was an old Coke bottle glasses wearing pot bellied security guard. He was always seen in his uniform, trying to keep peace and order around him at any cost, including getting into physical fights with anyone who dare challenge him. Jerome was a loudmouth pimp. Early on, he had eyes for Pam, who does her best to keep her distance. He usually appears on the scene with his signature spiel. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Roscoe was an annoying child with a never-ending runny nose and a slick mouth. He also constantly went at it with Gina. Dragonfly Jones was a martial arts expert, in quotations. Despite his self-proclaimed status, he was seen being beaten up in nearly every appearance. Bob for Marketing, a man who worked at the same firm as Gina, was Martin's only white character. He can best be described as a stereotypical surfer dude slash redneck. Elroy Preston was the fictional godfather of black surf music who, after becoming washed up, took up working as an auto mechanic. He's known for randomly breaking into song while on the job. Don't you know, no, girl? King Beef was Cole's favorite 70s black exploitation movie actor. For the character, Martin donned a huge muscular bodysuit. Similar to his Elroy Preston character and his singing, King Beef loved to break into dance whenever the spirit moved him. I will love to rock each and every one of your worlds. But first, I must die. Another memorable aspect of Martin was the iconic catchphrases that spread throughout popular culture and became common phrases among young fans. Some of the most used ones were, What's up? What's up? What up? 
You go, girl! <laughs> and... Get the steppin'! From a career perspective, Martin was at the absolute top of his game in the mid-90s, but he'd also begun to exhibit some odd behavior in public. In May 1996, he was spotted in the middle of a busy intersection in Los Angeles, yelling and cursing, and in possession of a concealed firearm. The police were called and they picked him up. While his rep blamed his behavior on dehydration and exhaustion, and claimed he'd neglected to take prescribed medication and suffered a seizure, Martin confessed in his A&E biography that he was high and had no idea how he ended up in the street. Later that year, he was arrested and charged with a misdemeanor when a gun was found in his carry-on luggage at an airport. More drama continued the following year when he punched out a guy on the dance floor of a nightclub who he claimed had bumped into him. And then his wife at the time, former Miss Virginia Patricia Southall, alleged he exhibited violent and unhinged behavior towards her, leading to their ultimate divorce. In Tashina's 2018 episode of TV One's Uncensored, she spoke about how all the success Martin was experiencing in his career at that time began to go to his head and also damage his relationships with other members of the cast. Unfortunately, you know, Martin, you get to a certain place in stardom where, you know, okay, he was no longer part of the cast, but he was the executive producer and now he's... The, so, you know, that distance started uh, being created, you know, between the two. And, you know, the network has a lot to do with that as well. You know, they take care of the star, and then everybody else is a piece of shit. That's just how it goes down. And, you know, you just, you embrace being a piece of shit. But Martin, unfortunately, you know, show business at a certain point in his life got the best of him. And when that happens, you see it happening. And there's nothing you can do about it. You know, you just, you pray for that person. It's almost like watching a car crash that you can't stop. Even with the behind the scenes drama and the personal issues of its lead star, Martin had a good five season run and probably could have gone on for a few more if what happened next hadn't happened. By season five, the relationship between Martin and Tisha had completely fallen apart, resulting in her quitting the show. Hence the reason why she doesn't appear in most of the episodes of the show's final season. HBO, which produced the series for Fox, filed for a temporary restraining order to try to force her to return to work, pending arbitration. She countersued, alleging repeated and escalating sexual harassment, sexual battery, verbal abuse, and related threats. In addition, the lawsuit said executives for HBO had long-standing knowledge about everything that was going on, but failed to do anything about it. Martin's response? He claimed that Tisha just wanted out of her contract. Tisha's lawsuit detailed a season-by-season -season account of what it called Martin's mistreatment and obsession. Apparently, problems started immediately in the first season when Tisha had to consistently turn Martin down for dates. In the second season, he became increasingly manic and volatile, and he would often and easily fly into uncontrollable fits of rage for no apparent or rational reason. He would also threaten to fire cast and crew members. The rages then became worse in the third season. Martin humiliated and abused Tisha in front of the entire cast and crew on so many occasions that it reached the point where she needed to be hospitalized due to the stress he caused her. Tisha charged that Martin would grope her, kiss her, force his tongue into her mouth, and simulate intercourse with her on the set in front of the cast and crew during moments when they were not rehearsing or filming scenes. By the fifth season, the lawsuit said Martin was simply out of control. Despite Tisha's pleadings to writers that they stop creating scenes where she and Martin would have to be in bed, they continued to do so. Then, in November 1996, Martin had his most hysterical outburst to date, physically confronting and throwing such a rage at Tisha that she was terrified and concerned for her safety. She then told producers she was leaving and would not be returning. Tisha's suit was settled out of court. She did return to the show to film the final episodes, but under the condition she did not have to share scenes with Martin, making for an incredibly awkward series finale that saw Martin and Gina repeatedly exit sets before the other would enter. At the time, Martin insisted the show concluded because he wanted it to. Even decades later, he'd insist the same, dismissing the narrative that his behavior had anything to do with the show's cancellation in an interview with GQ in 2020. I just decided to end it. People said that I got canceled, but that wasn't the case. I decided to just leave the show. A week or so after that, Tisha did an interview with The Talk and was asked about her former co-star's remarks. Well, 
you know, I, I can't go into much detail about the past because there was a confidentiality agreement. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. So the gag order says no. Okay. But what I can say is, to, to, to your question, mm -hmm. I was actually kind of shocked. And mm -hmm. so there were people in my ear saying, you know, just to be still, be quiet, don't say anything. And then there were other people who were like, you need to pack back, you know what right, I mean? Right. <laughs> but, but I was like, I took a day and I said, I'm gonna just hit him up. So I hit him up. He called me within the, a minute. Mm -hmm. it, was, it didn't even take him a minute to call me back. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, hey, and he was like, T. I said, yo, are we good? Right. And um, he was like, yeah, T, don't read into what it is. You know, there's a lot of people that's trying to bring up the past and trying to make it news today. But, you know, T, we're good. I love you. I love your family. And I was like, OK. And he said, most people don't know that we've talked. And so when you go, if you look back, there was a, some pictures of us. And we had uh, lunch last year. Mm -hmm. And most people were talking about a reboot. And for us, it wasn't about a reboot. It was about a reconnection. He uh -huh. reached out to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And I got to break bread with my co-stars, mm -hmm. and we got to talk about everything. Okay. Oh, good. okay, and so I can't, again, I'm not going to go into details, because right. I want to respect his privacy, and I want right. to respect mine. Yeah. But I will say, by the end of it, it was nothing but laughter and healing. Mm -hmm. And I got a chance to experience that, and I'm good. so glad that we're in a good place right now. Sadly, on October 12, 2016, Tommy passed away from a ruptured abdominal aneurysm following a surgical procedure in the Atlanta, Georgia area. He was 52 years old. Now, here's some more fun facts about Martin. In season one, the song Gina performed in episode 25, titled Variety Show, was her very own. Push was the debut single off her 1993 self-titled debut album. Push, you got to push. Come on now, push, Gina. You got to push it till you get it. In the Guard Your Grill episode where Martin fought professional boxer Tommy Hearns in a boxing match, Martin was able to put his real life athletic skills to use since he was an amateur boxer in his teens. That Jodeci performance that Martin crashed in Hollywood swinging was a total surprise to the members. They had no idea that he was gonna do that. That fake dog in Suspicious Minds was actually supposed to be real. Martin had asked the network to provide him with one, but when it came time to tape the episode, a stuffed one was brought out. So he did his best to roll with it. Even though Tracy Morgan's career started before his appearances on Martin, that job was what really skyrocketed him to becoming the massive star he is now. Martin saw a lot of potential in the new comedian, so he gave Tracy a small part on his show in the role of Hustle Man, long before he became a regular on Saturday Night Live. Bar owner Nipsey, played by Sean Lampkin, was a longtime friend and right-hand man of Martin. He passed away on March 8, 2023. Gospel Sextet Take Six performed the theme song for seasons four and five. What's up? What's up? When the show hit their 100 episodes milestone, the cast expected a grand celebration. Fox gave them a basket. Martin was livid especially back in the 90s era. When a series reached that point, it deserved high praise. At the very least, it meant that the show was eligible for syndication and could continue to generate revenue for years. When Seinfeld hit that milestone in 1995, the LA Times reported that NBC held a lavish party for the cast and crew. In his a and &E biography, Tashina said Martin thought they were being treated unfairly and recalled how upset he was upon seeing the reward for their hard work. He was working on set at the time, and she recalled he stopped everything and walked off. After he'd had a little chat with the network, they did end up receiving some nice gifts. One of Martin's episodes was supposed to serve as a spinoff of Tashina's character Pam. In Going For Mine, season five, episode 21, Pam is fired from her job, but then helps a friend discover a new talent for a record company, which lands her a job there as an A&R executive. Unfortunately, it wasn't picked up. Christopher Kid Reed already knew Martin and Tisha from when they were in House Party together, leading him to appear in season one, episode six, titled Forever Shanene, where he was matched up with her from Martin's radio show contest. As for who did the theme song for the earlier seasons, there's always been some uncertainty over it. During the cast 2022 reunion, after Tisha co-signed the host, saying that DJ and rapper Kid Capri did it, 
Martin surprised everyone by correcting him, saying that it was actually Carl's voice. Kid Capri then posted a video refuting Martin's claim, saying that it was indeed him, and he was upset at Martin for trying to erase his legacy. Several years prior though, Christopher Kid Reed told Sway in the Morning that it was him imitating Kid Capri. And last, but certainly not least, though he was clowned throughout the entire run of the series for not having a job, Tommy absolutely did. Even though there was a moment in one of the episodes from the first season when it was hinted at, it was finally confirmed by Tisha in a podcast interview in 2016 that Tommy was a counselor at a boys and girls club. Three decades after the show's debut, the cast of Martin came back together for a televised reunion in 2022. Martin The Reunion aired on BET and showcased stars Martin Lawrence, Tisha Campbell, Tashina Arnold, and Carl Anthony Payne II, taking a step back into the show's sets and reminiscing about some of their best moments. As far as the topic of a reboot is concerned, Martin said that he would never say never, but since Tommy's no longer here, probably not. Martin went into second-run syndication in 1995, and HBO Home Video has released all five seasons on DVD in North America. The series is currently available to be streamed on several platforms, including Amazon Prime Video, BET Plus, and Max. <laughs>